of Infosys, one of India's most successful post-liberalization stories, has been well told. But what is less well known is how Infosys, the business, finds roots in the love story of Sudha Murthy and Narayana Murthy. A self-confessed leftist, a 28-year-old Narayana Murthy fell in love with Sudha Kulkarni, an engineer who had stormed her way into what was formerly Telco, now Tata Motors, becoming the first woman to work on the company's shop floor. A few years later, she would unknowingly become one of India's best angel investors, putting down 10,000 rupees, virtually all her savings, to fund Murthy's dream. She was very young, full of joy, full of uh, humor, uh, full of uh, joie de vivre. Uh, you know, it was, uh, she kind of, she lit up the room. Was it love at first sight for you? I would say yes for me, but I don't know what <laughs> she thinks. So <laughs> I hope she too thinks so, but. Was, was it love at first sight for you, Mrs. Murthy? No. Because I was brought up in an engineering college, mm. only girl, uh, with all male members, my classmates, friends. So talking to any other young man is as good as talking to a friend. Huh. It is not like, you know, uh, oh, if I meet a young man, I fall in love. No, it, I was not that kind. And I knew how to talk to a boy without feeling shy. Mm. So, it was not... No, shy or not? And you haven't been. I mean, you were the only woman to start working at Telco on the shop floor, creating history. So, you've created history and broken barriers and pushed boundaries in your own way in the 70s. So, for me, it is like any other young bright fellow. Uh -huh. I met him. Prasanna's friend. Prasanna was my colleague. At the telco. Up and coming fellow. <laughs> <laughs> up, and, up and coming fellow. I want the two of you to relive the, uh, the proposal, which, uh, which quite romantically actually happened in an auto rickshaw in Pune. So, and, and it, was a, it was completely spontaneous because you hadn't actually planned to no, do that. No, so no. How did that happen? They were young. Yeah. What is there? They decided to marry. <laughs> and you know, we were more spontaneous. Huh. 50 years back, I met Murthy 50 years back. Yeah, and... Uh, so, Sala Pehle. <laughs> no, no, 49 and 3 months because oh. October Sunday. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, those days you're in, you don't... Uh, you, you, you're quite exuberant. Huh. You... kind of... because you are exuberant and spontaneous, Sometimes you don't analyze the analyze what you say very carefully before saying. And uh, of course, when you're sitting next to anger, only well, of course, the rickshaw driver is there in the front. <laughs> but, As witness. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And uh, you know, you were uh, we were coming from. Uh, East Street in Pune. Of course, you have you're been in Pune, yes. so you know it very yes. well. I don't need to describe to you. We had gone to Chungfa there. But there, Pune has and, changed a lot from and, time. And then, uh, it, by then, you know, I, in some way, I knew I was going to take up a job mm. because I had closed uh, Softronics and I had already got some inkling of what I would do and I was a lot more confident and uh, there was of course a lot of uh, skepticism from her, her side, father's side, obviously. I, I don't blame him for Akshat, I would have done the same thing. And no so <laughs> in some way there was that hurry, uh. there was that exuberance and I said, yeah, this is the thing. And you didn't, you didn't think whether you should give it some time to think about it. You said yes immediately. Well, by the time we knew each other for four years, four years, it is not a small time. And I knew what he is by that time. Okay. 
Eventually that culminated into the two of you getting married on the 10th of February 1978 uh, and it wasn't an easy battle to win because you had to convince your father. You didn't do a very good job of trying to convince him when you showed up in a red shirt and showed up late. So, uh, so you didn't win brownie points with no, your future no. father-in-law clearly no. and had to work hard on that relationship and you were very clear about how you wanted to do your wedding, a small wedding uh, and that didn't earn you sort of points from either families either. What was that like to be able to negotiate one of the most significant events of your life on your own terms? Uh, I have 75 first cousins. I come from a huge family. Everybody has a family tree. I have a family forest. <laughs> okay. And it was the first wedding in my family, in the sense in my father's house. And uh, naturally when we celebrate that, whole, uh, all my cousins will turn up and it will be minimum 200 people on my side and uh, apart from Murthy's. So actually and Murthy thought about it. By doing that what happens ultimately people will come eat talk and uh, enjoy and go back. But we should we should know how we should live. Marriage is not one day event. It may be one day event for the parents and others. For us it is a commitment for lifelong. So we said let us be very simple because we live simple way. We should make our marriage in a very simple way. 800 rupees. We spent 800 rupees for the marriage. Together. Together, 400 he paid, 400 I paid. My father was very upset because they wanted to make a grand wedding. And uh, I told, no, only my siblings and his siblings should come for the wedding. Then he said, I can't do it in Hubli because in Hubli culture, if you eight people are called for the wedding, people will think that I'm run away or a bride, that kind of, there's something wrong. He said, how can we perform in Hubli? He was a doctor and a professor. So every person, uh, every other person in Hubli, either a patient or his student. Okay. So he said, I have so much people. I mean, we have lived there 50 years. I can't do it with uh, eight or 10 people. Then Murthy's mother, uh, very nice lady, she offered, we'll do in Bangalore, in the house. So on my side, there were five people or six people. My parents plus with three siblings, um, we are four children. Yeah. My aunt and my uncle who brought me up because my grandparents were not there. And over five, six, seven on my end and uh, on Murthy's side, his siblings. That's it. Okay. That's it. And Murthy told me, the choice is, I'll give you 300 rupees. You want to buy a Mangal Sutra or you want to buy a Sari? I said, Sari will not last long. Maybe Mangal Sutra will last long. I said, okay, I will have Mangal Sutra in a thread. Not even in gold, okay? That's it. Well, and you know, we... <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, come in. You know, we had a lunch at the Raghavendra Swami temple, mm. walking distance from our home. My mother used to live on uh, 33rd Cross, 11th Main. And very within walking distance, we had a Raghavendra Swami temple. And we had lunch there. Mm. The marriage itself was about half an hour and she had uh, tutored the priest because she knows Sanskrit. The priest did not know Sanskrit as well as she did. So she selected the various verses and then uh, it was all over in half an hour. Then we went to the temple, we had our lunch mm. there. And by about 11.30, 11.45, it started at 10.30, by about 11.45, everything was It was, was all spent. done. And there, all. Was, and there was a special wedding gift that she gave you. There was an account of all the money that she had spent on your dates, which amounted to about 4,200 rupees. That's right. <laughs> I was uh, pretty good in that sense. I kind of, you know, I made her pay for all our <laughs> dinners. He started his own company, he did not have money. Uh, before yeah. that, you know, I voluntarily took half the salary mm. at the Systems Research Institute where uh, I, I joined after I came back from Paris. I said, look, uh, this is a startup and I want to uh, make some sacrifice, otherwise startups don't mean anything. Mm. So I just took half the salary. Uh, Professor Krishna was a little bit uh, uncomfortable and surprised. I said, no, don't worry, I, this, is, uh, this is fine. So therefore, I hardly had any money. I finished my money 
latest by six seventh of a month and then I would sponge on her. <laughs> I, I actually didn't know the, the reason why you spell your surname as M-U-R-T-Y and you spell it as M-U-R-T-H-Y was because you believe that Sanskrit version of Murti is the most appropriate spelled M-U-R-T-Y. Because Sanskrit is the perfect language hmm. and because for every pronunciation there is a letter. So when I said THY, I said that is TH. And Murti in Sanskrit is, uh, you know, Narayana Murti, Vasudev Murti. This is a kind of a, a name uh. where you can, uh, you can visualize that. Murti is a statue, hmm. so it cannot be THY. So in the, it's one of the conditions in marriage is, I will not write my surname THY, because against the Sanskrit spelling. And that is our origin actually. And you oh, had not only her, that. even her children, all yes. her children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are, are Murti and not Murti. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you, you had no issues with that? No, not really because, uh, you know, I, I was uh, quite uh, open-minded, quite modern mm -hmm. in these things. Therefore, I said what is important is that uh, we should uh, start off with give and take wherever possible mm. and we should agree to disagree without being disagreeable. We should uh, give space to each other so that both of us can operate uh, uh, freely and uh, that our identity can uh, be shaped. So these were some of the ideas that we that I started with, and then I said, uh, look, whatever I've tried to do in life, as a great follower of Mahatma Gandhi, my belief is I should lead by example. Mm. I have tried to lead by example in almost everything that I have done in life. So therefore, I said, if I have to insist on whether T or THY, I thought that was not the right thing. I want to understand from you the day when you told Mr. Murthy that you should be part of Infosys as well because you were part of the story from the very start. You provided the seed capital. You in fact provided the very differentiating idea that Infosys should focus on the export market as opposed to the domestic market and when you finally thought that this was an opportunity for you to be part of the company, he said no and, and that wasn't an easy one for you to accept. No, but one more important thing, she was as qualified in mm, most ways, exactly. more qualified than all the six or seven of us. That is also very important. Not that she was not qualified. Exactly. So therefore that's very important. Yeah. So why did you say no then? No, again, you know, I had this uh, feeling that good corporate governance means not bringing family into it because those days it was only family rule, all kinds of children used to come and uh, run the company. There used to be a violation of all laws. But later on, Shirin, I must tell you this, a few years ago, I had a long discussion with a couple of professors of philosophy mm. from uh, two extremely well-known universities in the world. And they said I was wrong. You know, they said, Ms. Muthi, you are wrong because as long as the other party has the merit, whether it's your wife, your son, your yeah. daughter, as long as that person has the merit, as long as they go through the normal procedure, you have no right to prevent that person mm -hmm. from being part of the thing because you are then taking away some of your right. That's why, I don't know if you remember, yes. when we had the discussion, yes. I openly said I was wrong. Now I don't believe this. I think what I was doing those days was wrong. I was uh, wrongly idealistic. Mm. And in some way, I think I was influenced a lot by the environment of those days. Mm. So you paid the price for his idealism in a sense. I know you accepted the decision,
but I don't believe you still agreed with it. Well, uh, I always believe, look, in given set of circumstances, what is the best way to react? She think almost like Harvard University <laughs> president. <laughs> I'm not a Harvard professor or anything. I'm a very simple. You, 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 you may want been, to drop You could have been piece. MIT. You could have been MIT, but you chose to, to give up and move to telco. Uh, so I said, no, Murthy is hell bent upon that. I should not come. Then he said, you be, join and I will drop. So, you know, the, suppose I joined, I would have also worked very hard. But go, you know, in, this was the license Raj. That time we had to sit in Delhi, you had to sit in Washington. See, with two children, how will I sit there for three months, six months? It was practically not possible, right? Though if it's an office, I can work day and night. But going and sitting in Delhi, he says, okay. And knowing Murthy, suppose he takes a decision, right or wrong, he will, he will stick to that. That I knew, that I knew. Once he takes that, then he will, he has, it has to be done. Now I can say, okay, I will join, then he will leave and he will not come. And it will affect Infosys. Now I have what choice I have. Well, when I should take up a job and Murthy will be at home or he will take some other job. Infosys, his dream or probably India's dream at that moment mm. will not come up. Now, if I don't take job, only I will be hurt. But it is good for the family, good for the children, it is good for the company and good for Murthy. So when there are four good and one negative and negative is about me and I will manage it. So you eventually decided to step back, accept the decision of not being a part of it. That is, uh, that is what uh, Brain said, but Har did not accept it. Har said, no, I have to work because I love technology. I used to love technology and your own company, you can work hard. You can see the joy is different, you know, it is not money. The joy of working with your colleagues, making a product or service or whatever, mm. it is something very nice. Mm. And I always enjoyed that in Telco. And that I have to give up. For everything there is a price. Now that you acknowledge the fact that you were wrong about uh, someone with merit who happened to be a family member coming back or being a part of Infosys, today, I mean if, if your second child were to say that I want to be part of Infosys, what would you say? If Rohan were to say he wants to be no, part of Infosys. Uh, he's, he's, I think he's even stricter than I am in these uh, ideas. He will never say that. Never. Never. Uh, first of all, I am just a shareholder of Infosys. Yeah. I, have, I have not been consulted on any issue in Infosys in the last since October, uh, since uh, August. 4th or 5th, 2017, when Nandan took over. Mm. Not once. It's the right thing. I mean, he, he's doing it uh, uh, the way we all did. Mm. Okay. So, apart from being the largest uh, family shareholders of Infosys, we have nothing else to do with Infosys. That's the reality. What would you say has been your biggest regret when you talk about uh, disappointing or not meeting expectations or letting someone down, what would you qualify as your biggest regret today? No, I think I have not been a great father. I could have been much better, a lot better. But thanks to Sudha, that particular lacuna was uh, uh, filled up. I have been very tough with my colleagues, very, very tough, without exception. But I have never done anything with a, with a desire to take advantage of that situation, with a desire to benefit from those things. My whole emphasis was always, even today, for example, so many times, I tell Pandu, you know, we had some foreigner coming. I told Pandu, have you checked this, have you checked that, have you checked that, have you checked that. Then he just, uh, as a little bit surprised, he looked at me. I said, I'm doing all this because I don't want India to look bad. Mm. So in everything that I have done so far, 
I, to the best of my ability, I have tried to make India look good, to the best of my ability. I have tried to make Infosys succeed. I have tried to be as generous as possible as to all my colleagues. But when it is a question of excellence, when it is a question of doing what is necessary on time, within budget, no, I have, I, I have not. I don't, you know, because my bosses didn't give me two. Huh. They were probably ten times tougher than I have ever been to any of my colleagues, huh. or to my children, or even to my wife. Hmm. But that's the way I am. So what is the, the advice that you've given Akshita and Rohan, uh, you know, from your own learnings, from your own experiences, as well as from your own mentors. I mean, JRD Tata was was a mentor to you, and I know that you follow his advice of giving back to society on the back of the success that you've earned very seriously. But what is it that you would like to pass on to uh, to Akshata and to Rohan? Uh, I told Akshata and Rohan these things. Akshata, I told we should always live within our means. You and your husband together, whatever money you make, whether it's, a good, whether it's big money or small money, you have to live within your means, okay? Because we lived always within. I never ever spent more than what I earned, okay? So that, is, so that there will not be tension in life. If your income is 100, spend 80, 60, 70. Don't cross that. Rohan, uh, both of them the same advice, no yeah. different, you know. Yeah. Both of them, I have told, have good values in life. You know, uh, nothing remains with you. Like what Buddha says, whatever is there, it perishes in life. But be good to others and do your work. The day you stop learning, you will become an old person. Are you surprised by the blowback that this 70-hour week comment of yours has got? <laughs> no, I, I rationalized it this way. If anybody that has performed much better than me in their own field, not mm. necessarily mm. in my field. I would respect, I would call them, and I would say, where do you think I was wrong in saying this? But I didn't find, a lot of my Western friends, a lot of NRIs, a lot of good people in India called me, and without exception, they were all very happy. Uh. They all said, whether it's 70, 60, that's not the issue. The issue is that we have to work hard in this country because the poor farmer works very hard. You know, the poor factory worker, worker works very hard. So therefore, those of us who received education at, at a huge discount, thanks to the, the, the subsidy from the government yes. for all these education students. In my case, I got scholarship right from my pre-university, national scholarship. So I said, we owe it to the less fortunate citizens of India to work extremely hard. Mm. So therefore, I, uh, whenever somebody who has performed better than me uh, comments on it, I would take it very seriously. But not otherwise, no. I come from a doctor's family. Uh. My father used to work more than 70 hours a week. My sister is a doctor. She also works more than 70 hours. Murthy has worked 90 hours a week. No, here we, you know, I, I used to go six and a half days. <laughs> Even in electronic city, I used to work uh. six and a half days. And every day I would leave home at 6 a.m. in the morning. Mm. I would be in the office at 6.20. And I would leave by about 8.15, 8.30. Then only Mohan would leave. And then I would be home by about 9.15, 9.30. Uh. Children would be ready. We would take them to uh, MacFast or one of those pizza joints or something. Uh. Those days, there were no pizza hut. And we would have a wonderful time up to 11, 11.30. So, and I used to do it for six days a week. It's about 14, uh, six, six and a half days. 13 to 14 hours a day, six and a half days a week, that was a lot. 
Mm. And I've done it. Therefore, one thing I have followed and that whatever advice I have given to others, I think by and large, I have followed it. Mm. I have not given uh, advice to people uh, without having done it myself.